This bill doesn't put one new gun on the street. It doesn't broaden anyone's scope or ability to purchase a firearm. Missouri is going to protect the Second Amendment rights of Missourians. According to Missouri law, some of those guns that were carried downtown on Sunday may have been carried legally. Missouri law does not prohibit minors from carrying or possessing firearms. The Federal Youth Handgun Safety Act prohibits anyone under the age of 18 from possessing a handgun or bullet. Missouri passed the Second Amendment Preservation Act. Constitutional clash resolved. The legal clash between Missouri and the federal government over the enforcement of arms laws delves into intricate constitutional debates and the nuanced interplay between state and federal jurisdictions. At its core lies Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act, enacted by Governor Mark Parson in 2021. This law seeks to prohibit local law enforcement from enforcing certain federal arms regulations that Missouri deems unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. However, this law faced formidable legal challenges. In February 2022, the federal government initiated a lawsuit against Missouri, asserting that the state law was unconstitutional and encroached upon federal authority. The U.S. District Court sided with the federal government, determining that the Missouri law violated the Supremacy Clause of the U.S. Constitution, which establishes federal law as supreme, superseding conflicting state laws. Subsequent to this ruling, Missouri sought to appeal the decision, yet the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit declined to permit the state to enforce the law during the appeal process. Consequently, Missouri turned to the Supreme Court, petitioning for intervention to overturn the lower court's ruling. During arguments before the Supreme Court, Missouri contended that its law represented a legitimate exercise of state sovereignty and reflected the state legislature's interpretation of the Second Amendment. They challenged the district court's authority to invalidate the law in its entirety, arguing that courts could only enjoin specific officials from enforcing laws, not nullify the laws themselves. On the opposing side, the U.S. Solicitor General rebuffed Missouri's stance, characterizing the state's law as an unconstitutional attempt to nullify federal statutes and impede the enforcement of federal law. While acknowledging Missouri's right to express its opinions on the Second Amendment, the Solicitor General underscored that states could not supersede federal law or obstruct federal enforcement efforts. The Supreme Court ultimately chose not to intervene, leaving the lower court's decision intact. Justice Clarence Thomas voiced his disagreement with this outcome, indicating that he would have granted Missouri's request. However, he abstained from providing further elucidation for his position. Meanwhile, Justices Samuel Alito and Neil Gorsuch while concurring with the denial of Missouri's petition, elucidated their understanding of the scope of the lower court's order. They emphasized that the order exclusively prohibited the enforcement of the law by state officials and employees, as well as individuals directly collaborating with them. Private parties not embroiled in the litigation could still enforce the law, and federal courts lacked the authority to nullify the law itself. In essence, the Supreme Court's decision not to intercede maintains the prevailing state of affairs while the legal feud between Missouri and the federal government persists in the lower courts. This case underscores the intricate balance of powers between state and federal authorities and the complexities inherent in constitutional interpretation within the domain of armed rights and federalism. The standoff between Missouri and the federal government exemplifies the perennial tension between state sovereignty and federal supremacy in the U.S. legal framework. The Second Amendment Preservation Act epitomizes Missouri's assertion of its right to determine the constitutionality of federal laws within its borders. By prohibiting local law enforcement from assisting in the enforcement of certain federal arms regulations, Missouri endeavors to safeguard what it perceives as its citizens' Second Amendment rights. Conversely, the federal government maintains that Missouri's law contravenes the Supremacy Clause of the U.S. Constitution which establishes federal law as supreme over state law. From the federal perspective, Missouri's attempt to nullify federal statutes and impede federal law enforcement operations constitutes an unconstitutional encroachment on federal authority. The legal battle between Missouri and the federal government encapsulates broader debates surrounding states' rights, federalism, and the balance of power between state and federal governments. It raises fundamental questions about the extent to which states can challenge federal laws they deem unconstitutional and the authority of federal courts to adjudicate disputes between states and the federal government.
Anyone 19 or older can legally conceal or open carry without a permit. This in Missouri, a person has to be 21 to buy a handgun or 18 to buy a rifle. Missouri has some of the weakest gun laws in the country. Missouri does not require a background check to purchase. Ownership of handguns is pretty much prohibited by anyone under the age of 18 except for very limited circumstances. Whereas in Missouri, only under the commission of a crime can a firearm be seized. Moreover, the case underscores the significance of the Second Amendment in contemporary American legal and political discourse. While the Second Amendment guarantees the right to bear arms, the interpretation and application of this right have been subject to extensive debate and legal scrutiny. Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act reflects one state's attempt to assert its interpretation of the Second Amendment and resist what it perceives as federal overreach in the realm of arms regulation. Ultimately, the Supreme Court's decision not to intervene leaves unresolved the broader constitutional questions raised by the clash between Missouri and the federal government. As the legal battle continues in the lower courts, it is likely to continue fueling debates about states' rights, federal authority, and the scope of the Second Amendment in contemporary America. The Justice Department says Missouri Governor Mike Parson can't ignore. This bill doesn't put one new gun on the street. It doesn't broaden anyone's scope or ability to purchase a firearm. But this is the same as seceding from the Union. And Missouri did not secede from the Union in 1861, and, th and it does not do so by passing this law. Missouri is going to protect the Second Amendment rights of Missourians. Supreme Court rejects Missouri law. The Supreme Court's recent emergency ruling, delivered with an 8-to-1 vote, has ignited intense debates around the Second Amendment. This decision denied a stay that would have protected Missouri's Second Amendment sanctuary law known as the Second Amendment Preservation Act, or SAPA. Consequently, the case has been sent back to the Eighth Circuit for further deliberation. Missouri is pushing for the case's dismissal, arguing that the federal government lacks the standing to challenge the law. This move has brought a fresh spotlight on the complexities and controversies surrounding arm rights in America. SAPA, enacted in 2021, is a bold legislative attempt by Missouri to assert state authority over federal arm regulations. The law includes several controversial provisions, such as declaring various federal arm laws as infringements on the right to keep and bear arms. Specifically, it targets federal laws requiring the registration of arms and mandating arm dealers to maintain records. Additionally, SAPA prohibits the state from employing former federal employees who had enforced such laws or supported efforts to enforce them. These measures represent a significant pushback against federal oversight, positioning Missouri as a battleground state in the ongoing struggle over arm control. The Supreme Court's refusal to reinstate the law marks a pivotal moment in this battle. By denying the stay, the court effectively upheld a lower court's ruling that SAPA is an unconstitutional attempt to nullify federal arm laws. The brief order provided no reasons for this decision, a common practice when the justices act on emergency applications early in litigation. However, the impact of this decision is profound, as it signals judicial resistance to state efforts aimed at undermining federal authority on arm control issues. Justice Clarence Thomas was the sole dissenter, yet he also did not provide an explanation for his stance. Missouri's argument for the case's dismissal rests on the claim that the federal government lacks the legal standing to challenge state laws in this context. The state maintains that SAPA is a legitimate exercise of its rights under the Tenth Amendment, which reserves powers not delegated to the federal government to the states. This argument taps into a broader narrative of states' rights versus federal authority, a recurring theme in American jurisprudence. Missouri's stance is that its law does not directly contravene federal regulations, but instead offers a state interpretation of Second Amendment protections. The legal battle over SAPA highlights the ongoing tensions between state and federal authorities regarding arm control. Proponents of SAPA argue that it is a necessary measure to protect Second Amendment rights from what they perceive as federal overreach. They view the federal laws targeted by SAPA as unconstitutional restrictions on arm ownership and argue that states should have the power to safeguard their citizens' rights against such infringements. This perspective is deeply rooted in the belief that local governance is more attuned to the needs and rights of citizens than a distant federal government. On the other hand, 
Opponents of SAPA contend that the law undermines the rule of law and sets a dangerous precedent for state nullification of federal statutes. They argue that allowing states to selectively ignore federal laws creates a patchwork of regulations that complicates enforcement and undermines national cohesion. This argument is bolstered by the Supreme Court's decision, which reinforces the principle that federal laws take precedence over conflicting state statutes. The ruling suggests a judicial preference for maintaining the supremacy of federal regulations, especially in areas of significant national concern like arm control. The broader implications of this ruling extend beyond Missouri. The decision could influence other states that have enacted or are considering similar Second Amendment sanctuary laws. It serves as a judicial rebuke to state efforts to nullify federal regulations, potentially deterring other states from pursuing similar legislative paths. The ruling underscores the ongoing legal and political battles over the Second Amendment, highlighting the contentious and deeply polarized nature of arm rights debates in America. It's called the Second Amendment Preservation Act, or SAPA for short. At least a lot of people in Missouri, that they, they think this is great. The state of Missouri has told the federal government to go mind their own business. Uh, my kids shoot. My seven-year-old owns multiple firearms, so I'm 100% in favor of expanding Second Amendment rights to go after people who are violent in nature and are committing crimes in our community. Supreme Court's emergency ruling against Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act is a significant development in the ongoing struggle over arm rights. By denying the stay, the court has upheld a lower court's decision that the law is an unconstitutional attempt to nullify federal regulations. This ruling reaffirms the supremacy of federal laws over conflicting state statutes and signals judicial resistance to state efforts to undermine federal authority on arm control issues. As the case returns to the Eighth Circuit, the legal battles over the Second Amendment continue, reflecting the deep divisions and high stakes involved in this contentious issue. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.